Well, by that time, the, the local population got to hear about us and, and, and they knew that if they came and complained that the village had been occupied by terrorists, that we would turn up there virtually the same night and, and relieve them of the hostage situation. The, the terrorists always took hostages. And the, the, the reason for that was that they didn't want anyone running away to inform sec security forces where they were. Uh, so ev with every attack that we, we did, uh, let's call it intervention attacks, we, there were hostages to, to rescue. Now, what Martin did was uh, the same as the other units uh, or, or sections like his that were quite widely spread out in, in the Urungui. They started to make such an impact with, with the locals and boost their confidence that the news started to spread and it went northwards towards Kariba. Um, and so, it, again, it was linked men that we were going for. And once that had happened, other, other uh, locals had the confidence to, to come and speak and to say they're over here or they're over there or whatever. And gradually we moved northwards to, to Kariba. Now that was actually out of the zone that I was supposed to operate in. But I knew that so far uh, security forces had no idea wh where the, the missile group was. And they just also didn't have the manpower to saturate the area and, and to go and look for them. And there was no news was coming out, no information was coming out to any other unit except ours as uh, from, from the locals. They trusted us and they didn't trust anybody else. So what I did was I deployed some of our guys out of our area but towards Kariba where I knew the, the next launch would, would occur. And Martin was a little bit naughty. He captured three terrorist leaders that were going to have a meeting. And he extracted from them what their modus operandi was. So we had a rough idea of, well, actually a bit less than a rough idea, of, of where the next incursion would come from. And all we had to do was to fo follow the power lines into towards Kariba and we would come across um, infiltrating insurgents. Now, not far from from where the last villages were, one entered an area that was virtually uh, had no population at all. And that was a Chirara safari area. And it had a, a, a radius of about 20 kilometers around Kariba. So we knew that the next launch would occur within that 20 kilometer uh, range or radius. And the thing with the SAM-7 missile is it, it follows, it trails a, an overhead aircraft. It, you can't aim it at an, uh, an approaching aircraft, it doesn't work like that. It follows the heat. Um, so we actually had no way of finding the missile gang other than when they launched another missile and hoped that they would run towards the villages that were now on sides with us. And somebody would say to us, that's where they are. To, to walk, to patrol the area in the Chirara Safari area was impossible. It, it was very densely populated with trees and bush. And then we're talking about 3,000 square kilometers. Uh, it, it was just unfeasible that somebody would stagger across the missile gang and being a, be able to take them out. So we, d we did the next best thing and we, we formed a line um, where we thought they would come across. And that's exactly what happened. They brought down the second aircraft with a loss of 59 lives. And they elected not to run back to Zambia because they knew that the ground forces would be intensified virtually immediately. So they came towards Irungui, not knowing yet that their linkmen were no longer alive. And when they got there, they went to the wrong village. 
which again was part of our plan. The headman escaped, he knew where to come to for help, and uh, he walked 30 kilometers through the bush and begged us to come there because they'd locked up some of his family in a hut and they were going to start killing them the next day if he didn't return. So it was, it was quite an astounding experience. The headman arrived at half past three in the afternoon and we had to be in position to attack this group by first light and the next morning. And I was the only security force member, official one, to know where they were out of the whole of the, of the Rhodesian army. And that was some, quite something. I must tell you, my adrenaline was running around like a racehorse. And the problem was that I couldn't go and tell any other unit about what we had found out because everybody would rush off uh, to, to where the village was and go and screw the whole thing up and the gang would be on the run again. And uh, I managed to find a, to keep the, the, the lid on things without telling anybody else. I found an SAS uh, a unit that could go out and uh, the rest's in the book.